What's up? What's going on? Exiles Belton here, back with uh, another video. We're we'll discussing a, a really huge change that uh, I think is kind of flying under the radar for a lot of people. That was announced with uh, Necropolis League 3.24, an upcoming patch. Uh, it's something myself and I know a lot of people are actually super excited about, and it's something that I think uh, actually can radically transform uh, the long-term prognosis for PoE in a bunch of ways. And so <clears throat> I did make a couple of community posts about this, but uh, what we're going to be talking about today is this change above here. Alternate art unique items can now be converted to a compound microtransactions using the new slash convert race reward chat command. The item will be destroyed and you'll be granted an account bound microtransaction that changes the appearance of an item of the same type to match that destroyed item. Now, I'm sure some of you have probably picked up on why this is a big deal. Um, first of all, uh, GGG has been kind of promising loosely this for many, many years. Um, but it has also been the groundwork for why a lot of people have collected things on standard over a long term of time. Um, and I'm going to explain to you guys why I think this is actually such a big change today. So uh, first thing first, what is an alt art? Um, and that's probably a, a good thing to establish or a race reward. So uh, we're going to look onto our profiles here. Um, if you're curious about what race rewards are, if you go over to the seasons and events here, you'll notice that uh, you have a bunch of different race seasons, right? So starting with race season one, and it ended off with the medallion race season. Back in the day when I first started, and up until uh, fairly recently, uh, well, maybe not fairly recently, but for a good amount of time, uh, GGG would hold events where they would have certain races. Uh, you'll see this now with a lot of the popular guys that uh, race at the beginning of leagues. A lot of them hone their skill sets initially through these. These were often little events where you would have, um, you know, the, f the fastest person to clear Act 1, fastest person to clear Act 2. They had varying uh, different uh, uh, objectives to them. However, um, a series of these events would comprise a race season, and uh, you would have a, ver a bunch of different rewards for those. Um, so when you would win a race, you would get a certain amount of points, or if you finished a certain place within a race, you would earn a certain amount of points. And at the end of that race season, depending how many points you had earned, you would be granted an alternate art. So if we go through here, or anyone can do this on their own afterwards, you can scale through and see what those race rewards actually were. Um, on top of that, another thing that uh, came from these was demigods. So if you were to win a race, uh, and these again happened in different capacities throughout the history of PoE, the person who would win would win a demigods. A demigods, uh, I have a full set of right here. Uh, actually, I'm not wearing boots uh, because I think that the gold worms look better. But this is what a demigod set is. A couple of these are alt arts. Uh, demigods are the uh, pieces of gear that grant max character size. If you can take a look at my character here, you can see it is massive compared to a regular one standing beside a person for uh, comparison. So uh, the demigods, um, th depending on what the race was... Uh, you could win one of these and these have their unique arts attached to them um the chest which i'm wearing right now is an alt art demigods which is what is giving the glow to the character so demigods are inextricably linked to race rewards however they also were done for um what we would call gauntlets now they used to have uh, shorter races uh for like you know they'd last like a week or two weeks in fact believe it or not because i know some of you <laughs> like to criticize the way that i play the game i i actually myself won a demigod so you can see here this is from parandis's flashback event i believe this was a one or a two week race uh, and you can see that it's in a remove only tab as well as descent champions you can see the whispering ice there and that is in a remove only tab if you ever see somebody with an alternate art uh, or a demigods in a league, this is how they get into the leagues. So they sit into remove only tabs until you re remove them. So as you can see, my Parandis one's probably been sitting there for about eight years. Um, however, uh, after one month of a league, you are able to remove them from your remove only stash and uh, use them in the league. So Fubgun, this league, uh, if any of you guys have, were following Fubgun and playing Magic Find, he had on actually this pair of gold worms. Um, now, mine has plus one gems because I'm Giga Chad. Um, actually, the real reason, uh, joking aside, was uh, sometime seven years ago, I got really drunk one night and I ball orbed um, roughly like 400 mirrors worth of items that I destroyed, including a bunch of alt arts and legacy and relic items. One of my bigger regrets in hindsight, but that is how I ended up with these. Um, but you'll notice that he was playing in the league and he had a pair of these on. But that would have meant that somebody had uh, one of them in a remove only tab. So that's how that's how uh, what alt arts are and a uh, race reward and what those come from. Now, why are alt arts kind of desirable and why are they kind of cool? Well, we, if we unequip our, um, our uh, demigods for a sec here, or if we just switch them even, you'll notice that um, thousand ribbons, for example, which is not a very highly sought after item in its regular version. If I equip, equip this, 
you'll notice that the artwork on it is actually it matches the alternate art that it has right or uh if we take a look at heat shiver um heat shiver this is actually i think one of the cooler looking ones if i put that on again not a super sought after item but that gives in my opinion a very cool looking um uh, unique 3d art there and so that's kind of the big drawing point of these alt arts or these unique items is that many of them have unique mtx's uh, or, so, or sorry unique uh, 3d art associated with them this is uh, actually an alternate art as well here this is the alternate art demigods um shield so you can see there it's got that fire burning inside and some of these are very cool i mean some of them look kind of silly uh, if i'm being completely honest some of them are uh and actually there are some of them as well that don't have a 3d artwork associated with them which is a bit of a bummer and uh to figure that out you can check out um the uh there, there are various websites uh, I, I believe the fandom the old fandom or the wiki probably has a list of them uh, where you can see what they look like. So just putting on a couple of these there. You can see these are the alt art gold worms that I'm wearing. Uh, you can see they've got that nice little cool glow. The uh, the wreath of, uh, or uh, what do you call these, feathers on the bottom of my character here. That's coming from the Demigod's Authority. Um, we could try switching up a couple of these here just so you guys can get a look at a couple of different alt arts. So there's three dragons there. Um, let's see here. <laughs> we can put on a blood dance. So you get that cool fiery blood there. Uh, Moku's actually is a ring that does give, uh, it, it's kind of hard to see because of the glow of here. I'll put it on. So there you go. Moku's, even though it's a ring, it does make your, you see how that's got that, that shiny little glow there uh, as opposed to the demigod side. Now we can switch Moku's over there and you'll see two glowing rings. It's a small thing. It's fairly innocuous, but nonetheless, it is, it is a kind of cool um, way there. Uh, here we've got, uh, what are these, chevrons. So you get that purple skin with the gold on them. Um, and I'll show you the, because uh, I know a lot of you are probably bow enthusiasts. <clears throat> we can uh, show you a couple of these here. And then we'll move on to the next point I want to make. Uh, boo, 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 boo. So you can see here with the, uh, the storm cloud, it's pretty cool looking. Oh, sorry. It's pretty cool looking there. You get, uh, let's see. You get that nice like little blue. The blue, they, they they very closely replicate their art for the most part, uh, like in terms of what they actually look like on this thing. And uh, so, yeah, they're, they're quite neat. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I think that's being blocked by the wings. Clear off the wings. There you go. If I take off the wings, you can also see the quiver there. So you see the uh, that's uh, Asphyxia's Wrath, and that matches the character model as it's shown. Um, any of these other ones worth showing? Malagaros, I suppose. Anyways, you guys get the idea. Um, that is what an alt art is. And so alt arts over the history of PoE have been uh, very expensive, and rather collectible items. Um, they are quite expensive. However, there are some that are certainly on the cheaper side too. Uh, this is a regular demigods. Actually, I can show you that there. I have several of these, but that's the skin for a regular demigods, which uh, as you can see, I think they're actually very, very cool looking. Um, you know, a full demigod set uh, by itself is, is I think, uh, one of the coolest looking uh, MTXs uh, in the entire game. Just the, the unique artwork they have for it. Um, oh, sorry. And uh, again, I do, I, I actually do think the gold worm goes better with the, uh, the demigods and the other one. So this is what a traditional demigods would look like, right? And then, as I mentioned, this is the alt art one, and the alt art one has this nice orange glow around it. But this is what a standard demigod set would look like. Now, um, in leagues, obviously, uh, you're never really going to see anyone wearing one of these uh, for the obvious reason uh, that, uh, as I mentioned, they have to be taken out of remove only tabs and they have not been rewards uh, given by the game for quite some time on a uh, sort of intrinsic or base level. So um, the race rewards more frequently have been other MTXs, uh, but that's how people get them in current leagues and whatever. Now, I, I want to point out a difference, a um, couple of terms that maybe some of you might not understand. Uh, there's also, so we've covered the alt arts. Those are uh, items that exist already that have a different uh, unique artwork and all, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes we'll have, um, again, a 3D art on your character. Uh, race rewards refer to anything that you could win from races, and that includes demigods. And then you also have legacy items. So legacy items, uh, sometimes the 3D, uh, the alt arts, when they were released, the item that they were released upon had different stats. So gold worm is a great example. You can see that this one has 24% increased quantity. Um, that actually could go up to, I believe, 30% increased quantity at the time. Now, uh, that is a legacy version of Goldworm, but it's also an alt art. 
Um, not all of the alt arts are legacies and not all of legacies are alt arts. Uh, if you have a, a race reward that was out of time when that unique item um, had different stats, then it would become legacy. Legacy items are not um, tied directly to alt arts or whatever. Uh, there's other ways uh, of seeing those. Uh, for example, you know, this is a crucible item that's legacy because it's no longer in the game. Um, you know, even this one right here where it has um, of the underground 50% uh, increased energy shield, that's a legacy mod. So is actually 30 to flat energy shield on the synthesis there. So legacy just refers to an item or a stat that's no longer in the game. Um, alt art refers to a unique 3D artwork that sometimes has a um, an actual MTX associated with it. And a race reward is just something that has been won from one of the races I, I mentioned, uh, either a race season or sometimes they could have been drawn out individual events. If you notice mine, uh, when I, I take away the remove only tab here, this is a flashback event. So that was like one of those like two week independently held races that awarded demigods. And this one here is a actual race season of reward. So that's what the difference is between each one of those. Now, um, Again, why does any of this matter? I'm sure some of you uh, are probably wondering. Well, uh, the big difference that uh, GGG has announced, and again, I'll bring that back up there. If you read, alternate art unique items can be converted to account-bound microtransactions using the new slash convert race reward chat command. The item will be destroyed and you'll be granted account-bound microtransactions. So why, why is that a big deal? Well, one of the reasons why many people, myself included, over the years of playing PoE have bothered collecting or assembling some of these is because it was always sort of promised by GGG that you would have the option at some point to be able to have those uh, race rewards or those alt arts apply to your character. So as you can see here, I'm not a big, I, I have uh, many, 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 many uh, purchases on the store, but they are all pretty much stash tabs. In fact, as a quick tangent, some people asked me to post a video going over my most expensive items um, that I ever have on standard. And I mentioned that it would be very difficult for me to do so, um, not only because I've crafted 210 mirror items uh, and I've played for 11 years, but I'm going to show you how many tabs I have in standard. This is me scrolling with my scroll wheel as fast as possible. Do, 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 do. Ooh, that timed pretty well. Anyways, my point is I have 3,300 tabs uh, dating back to almost 11 years now. Actually, oh, actually, is today my 11 year? Oh, wait, let, why don't we take a look here? When did I join? March 30th. Today is March 23rd. One week from today, boys. One week from today, it'll be 11 years. Crazy. Time flies, man. What a game. What a life. Anyways, that is, um, that's why I didn't do that. Uh, as you guys can probably imagine, I have a quite a large assembly of different items, different alt arts, different foil items. Um, oh, actually, I guess that's maybe something I should point out as well. What is a foil? A foil items, uh, for example, like this or these ones right here. I was a big cast on crit discharge guy, so I've been assembling various uh, discharge foils over the years, just kind of uh, paying homage to that. Um so a foil item, those are more of a recent thing. Those have come from, obviously, the um, the Reliquary Keys, the Voidborn Reliquary Keys, um, and from Valdos uh, more recently. Uh, those actually differ from Relics. Uh, this is a Relic right here. Uh, this is actually a Relic and a Legacy item. So this is from Legacy League. Relics have the green foil, like this, and that compares to a foiled item here. So this is a foiled Calm's Heart. As you can see, it has 500 max life. Whereas this is a Relic Count's Heart, which came from Legacy League, which has a thousand to max life. There were actually only 10 of these that dropped in Legacy League, and I had three of them. Uh, that night I got drunk and uh, corrupted everything. I uh, destroyed two of them, so RIP. But we still have one, and that's why it has that crappy little uh, <laughs> chance to avoid uh, on it, which uh, I think actually a couple of months after I made that decision to get drunk and do that that one night <laughs> was when they introduced double corrupting, so RIP to me. Anyways... Uh, moving on from that, I don't think these are worth too much anymore anyways because of the you know power creep over time. Um, but that's uh, a foil item is not an alt art and a foil item is not a um, a race reward. So it is very unlikely that those apply to what this is saying um, in any case. Um, however, one of the weirder things is if you do go look on um, alternate, sorry, if you go look on the wiki or actually, sorry, this is the fandom. Oh. If you go look on the fandom, and again, fandom is usually outdated, it uh, it does uh, actually show uh, relic items as alternate arts when you look on the alt art page. 
So I don't know if there's going to be any consideration given to those ones. Um, I would highly, highly doubt that that's the case. Uh, but as you can see, it does actually show those. This is a pretty good list, though, uh, just to give you an idea. And it does show them up pretty close. Cloak of Flames is a beautiful alt art. Alt art. Um, but it's a good way to get to see, if you're curious yourself, to see what the different alt arts look like. Just because they have these nice high-resolution images, it's uh, pretty indicative of what they'll probably look like on your character. I'll, I'll link that uh, below the video in case anyone's curious to see what they are. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, I did make, as I mentioned before, I made a post about this on my um, community section. And uh, a couple people, uh, historically, anytime I've mentioned standard, have left comments along the lines of what this guy did here. And um, I'll, I'll show you this comment here. And so, you know, the guy says, oh, my God, that changes everything. LOL, JK, we don't get, care about standard. Now, this is pretty common anytime I address standard. Um, it, I've mentioned this before, and anyone who's watching me for any degree of time knows I, I don't actually play in standard. I play leagues every time. Um, however, you know, having crafted the amount of mirror items I have, as well as I showed you all those tabs, if, if somebody wants to buy something over there, I'm not going to deny them that fun. Um, also, I just think in general... If people are excited about something, it's a pretty lame thing to do to try to try and discourage that. You know, like live and let live. You don't play standard, fine. Um, you know, but somebody who it's not that easy to get excited about things. Some people don't have the time. Maybe their friends play there. Whatever the reason, uh, I don't really think it's necessary. I don't, obviously don't care myself. Feel free to criticize me all you want, but I think for people that play there to be constantly told that their their worth their time is worthless and what they're doing is meaningless by a bunch of people that are you know. Um, just trying to put other people down it's, it's kind of a kind of a, a shitty thing to do so i don't really think it's necessary but again feel free to express your opinions all you want to me in any case though um having seen that and uh being one of those moments myself uh, i felt it appropriate to reply to the gentleman there with uh with a comment that um i think actually kind of uh, is going to lead into the bulk of the arguments i want to take here and so i'm going to read you the comment that i said back um <clears throat> So what I said in response to that was, it's funny how people uh, who are broke, uh, or sorry, funny how when it's when people are broke, it's a we and never an I. That's that's referring to L O L J K. We don't care about standard, the collective uh, we, um, and never an I, as if it's a default setting to not care about something you would personally assign no value to. Here are some facts. Number one, people do care about MTXs. Don't believe me? GGG's financial reports are public and you can go and read them. This is how the company supports itself and has always supported himself. Two, due to the expensive nature of MTXs on the shop, especially in places with poor exchange rates, so countries where the, you know, the US dollar or whatever um, does not convert properly to the price of the MTXs, um, they can cost far, far more. I've actually seen quite a few uh, Reddit posts about this and people just asking for them to adjust it to the, the local currency, especially countries that are experiencing things of hyperinflation. I believe I saw local hall actually make a post about this with South Africa and uh, I've seen people in Argentina and places like that. And that, it's a very good point. I mean, um, you know, obviously somebody in a country with political strife or hyperinflation or, or, um, you know, political issues in general, um, that is in, uh, impacting the purchasing power of their dollar. These are probably people that, um, might enjoy video games and might enjoy a little bit of that escape more than anybody. And, uh, I think that, um, you know, obviously GG is a company, but it, some, some consideration for them should, should be taken into account. But, uh, that aside, uh, you know, due to, uh, Given the fact that some places are in positions like this, MTXs um, can be earned in other ways, right? Um, if you take a look on my character here, you'll notice I have all of these seasons rewards done, right? 48 to 40, 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 40, 40 at infinitum. Now, one of the things that you can get from those are these cool towers that I have uh, outside of my hideout here. See each one of these eagle towers each one of these represents a challenge league where i've got 40 out of 40 right and another thing you earn from those though are these mtx's right so you'll notice for myself because i've played quite some time i actually never buy mtx's from the store so these are all mtx's that i have earned from various challenge leagues uh sometimes when you uh, buy like a stash tab it'll give you a mystery box so a couple of them are like random ones that i've got from that but uh, in general these are all different mtx's that i've earned and so one of the drawing factors, again, for some people in terms of longevity and things that they enjoy in this game, because the default character appearance is pretty shitty, um, a lot of people do go after these MTXs. And um, in many cases, not only is there not as much of a reward really associated with purchasing one, it's not very exclusive. And uh, people do care about exclusivity, you know what I mean? Uh, for anyone that played like WoW back in the day or any other real game where they've had like achievement-based like mounts or uh, character skins or whatever, um, 
you know, you know, when you see somebody who has one that looks cool, but it's being purchased off of a store, nobody ever really like looks twice at you because it's like, oh, the guy just spent 30 bucks. But when you have something that, you know, is indicative of amount of time or skill or, um, you know, uh, challenge uh, that, that required people are like, wow, like this guy's a committed player, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's part of the drive of multiplayer games, right, is, is to try and have the coolest or the best gear. And, and uh, you know, it's why the game isn't single player, why trade exists. And so MTXs are a very important part, um, again, not only for the bottom line of GGG, as I mentioned in my first point, but in the, sec in the second point, um, not only do they give a sense of achievement and reward for people who want that, but the people who have perhaps some inability with their relative uh, purchasing power to buy them off the shop, it gives them a way to participate in the game um, that, uh, you know, I think is very core to, to the game's growth and core to the game's drive. So now that was the second point. Third point. Alt arts, demigods, and relics are almost exclusively available in standard unless they are in remove only tabs. And I mentioned that before the remove only tabs, as I showed you earlier on, like this, right? These are the only way to get them into leagues currently. <clears throat> um, even if you do not care about standard, uh, which I know a lot of people don't, um, and again, I, I don't actually play in standard, I don't kill mobs there, I don't pursue character growth there or anything like that, but I, I do go over to do mirror services or whatever, somebody wants to buy something, I'll log over quickly as long as I'm not busy, and uh, sell it to them. So, uh, this would make uh, some consideration for standard the only way to access some of the most exclusive MTXs in the game, including in temp leagues. And what I'm referencing then there, again, is this change that was announced the alt art unique items can be destroyed right so as we went over and as i showed to you guys some of these have very very cool unique artworks some of them um some of which are date back about 10 years right they are very very exclusive and as we just discussed not only are MTX is kind of core to the idea of Path of Exile in terms of GGG's monetization, but it's also something that players can pursue meaningfully to help give them a sense of purpose, a sense of accomplishment. Um, and it's one where it's a little less, um, you know, a little less, uh, uh, I don't want to say cheesy than just buying one yourself, but it uh, it definitely um, allows people to, to feel like, you know, their time is well spent in pursuing them. So what GGG has announced here basically to kind of uh, to clarify this is that I'll be able, uh, as of next patch, you'll be able to take something like um, this Altar Heat Shiver, which again has a very cool uh, MTX. And instead of, you know, maybe you haven't played many leagues, maybe you don't want to buy one on the shop, maybe you can't buy one on the shop. But instead of just having this sitting on your standard stash tab where you occasionally maybe get to link it to somebody or log over to standard, even if you're a league player, You'll be able to type this chat command, right? And this will be destroyed. However, when that gets destroyed, it will go to your MTX tab here. All right. Now, this is something that is game changing. It is a game changer in so many ways. Uh, I, I am actually so excited about this to the point that I really haven't even <laughs> I really haven't even been able to to think uh, about the other ones in comparison. Um, you know, even though they nerfed tornado shot and other things, um, the the long term impact of this is is pretty crazy. And again, as I mentioned earlier, GGG has told said in the past that they were going to do this, but um, they are. Uh, Maybe there are some elements of this aside from the fact that alt darts now have some value that people aren't considering, and we're going to get into those now. So GGG, and this is the fourth point that I made to this gentleman. Actually, I'll finish up reading this to you guys. So I, I just mentioned that uh, this is the only way they're going to be able to get these in temp leagues. Now, GGG has stated that they are allowing for MTXs and tabs to transfer. And this is a very big point. Tabs and transfer between PoE1 and PoE2. While it wasn't clear if this only included st store-bought MTXs or if it also included earned MTXs through challenge leagues and the likes, as I just showed you, if it's the former, alt arts and by extension standard is the only way to create long-term value with your currency extending past PoE1 into PoE2, at whose inception it will likely kill PoE1 forever for a vast majority of the player base. That's to be seen, of course, but one can one can safely assume that especially for the more casual audience um, and the growing and ever-growing audience that they have, with the inception of PoE2, PoE1 largely will lose a lot of the players. Now, we're going to go here because uh, I do remember them citing this specifically. This is from uh, PCGames.com. <clears throat> Path of Exile 2 uh, leagues... Uh, no, that's not it. Path of Exile 2 Mitro Transactions. Uh, so this is just talking about what they are and they make up Path of Exile's economy. Now, here's the important part. 
Grinding Gear Games confirms that all of your currently owned microtransactions for Path of Exile, along with any bought uh, or for either game in the future, will be usable in both games unless it's hyper-specific to the content of one game. Now, let's take a look at the wording here. Confirms that all of your currently owned microtransactions. Now, if we go here, what are these? This is your microtransaction stash. And if we look at what they said previously, destroying these will add them to your microtransaction stash. Now, are skin transfers necessarily hyper-specific to one game? They could be. You know, I could be overly, um, I could be overly excited about this, and perhaps I'm jumping the gun. But it's certainly not without the uh, outside of the question that somebody, uh, your microtransaction stash, both in terms of achievement ones and ones that uh, you end up doing through this, because whether or not you have bought these off of the, um, you know, the trade site um, and got one of them, that is an accomplishment in of itself. These are these are relatively expensive items, some of them, and some of them are very very expensive. This amulet alone is about 50 mirrors, right? We'll take a look here, right? So here, Demigod's Presence, 50 mirrors, 100 mirrors, 800 mirrors. Alt Art Demigod's Chest that I showed you guys I have. 10 mirrors, 420 mirrors, 800 mirrors. Uh, these ones have not been updated since they made this announcement. Alt Art Alpha Harls, and this is like the pinnacle for most people. 250 mirrors, 300 mirrors, 800 mirrors. However, if we take a look here, just looking at, and there's a special splash tab for this, by the way, down here, you can just do alternate art. Yes. If we take a look at this, there's actually lots of different alt arts, right? That are available that are not super expensive, you know? Uh, I mean, you know, 200, 300 divs, 100 divs, that's not cheap, right? But when you think about the sense that, you know, this is on standard, right? And so if you've, I mean, this lead, people have lots and lots of currency. And in a lot of cases, people just throw that currency away. This is one of the things that I actually wanted to show you here too. And because it's one of the major points I want to make. If we take a look at concurrent player numbers, and this is for every league in PoE's history, there's an obvious trend here and one that people can, you know, surmise relatively easily. The game itself, right, is going to just you have a lot of people who are excited at the beginning of the league and the player numbers drop consistently throughout now at the end of the leagues a lot of people what do they do they throw they give their currency away to say a friend or a streamer or something or they go on to you know reddit and do a giveaway or they double corrupt everything or or whatever it is um and most people uh you know as the the guy who uh who decided to jump in and tell me that my excitement and, and some other people's excitement, uh, this dude right here, this gentleman, uh, as he mentioned, who, LOL, JK, we don't care about standard. And I understand the sentiment at its core, right? If you're just playing in the temp leagues, as I do, and currently playing the temp leagues, it really doesn't make a ton of sense to maintain currency in standard because there isn't really any implicit or intrinsic value in standard for a lot of people. However, I think that I pointed out uh, through the argument here that that is potentially going to change. Now, MTX is, uh, not only do they drive the store, not only are they the core of every possible achievement that you can in challenge leagues, right? What do you earn when you get challenges? At 40 out of 40, you get a totem. But why do most people aspire to get maybe even 38 out of 40? Because of MTXs, right? Um, what, what are the one of the best ways to show that you have made accomplishments in the past in this game? So to create some kind of a visual legacy for your efforts in the past. That's really the best way that I can describe um you know mtx's that are earned right you know people get these because a they look cool on your character people like seeing them right but if you had a league where you were very successful or you put in that extra effort to go through all those challenges by wearing that you know for, for myself here like we've got a full legacy gear right like legacy league many leagues will go breach as i pointed out um you know i've, I've done the challenges in many different leagues right there are certain ones here like breach portals parandus league portals there are certain things that if you're playing in a group or if you're in town just showing your stuff, it's you can take a sense of pride in the effort that you've put in the past. Is it super important? No, I realize that most people don't consider their legacy in this game, but it's a cool way for people to feel like their efforts in the long run have been rewarded somehow. And I think that that makes it so that people, when you confront numbers like the ones that we just looked at right here, it's like, you know what? Maybe I am, instead of quitting right here, maybe I'm gonna play for an extra week or an extra two weeks so I can earn this thing that is allowed there. And again, when we take a look at the very end of the league, what is sort of universally the case? Almost nobody is playing. And this this drives the content cycle of PoE, yes. But, and this is what uh, I was saying that could change the game forever. All of a sudden, we now have a reason for standard to matter. 
Because if even if you do not care about playing here, in the same way I don't particularly care about playing here, guess what? Purchasing one of these items now gives you a way to get some of the most exclusive MTXs that are in the game, right? And according to GGG, your currently owned microtransactions along uh, will be brought to Path of Exile 2 with you. This includes stash tabs and the likes, right? Now, again, if you press K, this is your microtransaction stash, and that is exactly where they're going to go. Could they adjust this, and could I be wrong? Yes. But do I think it's very encouraging and a very exciting thing? Absolutely. Not to mention, they just delayed. They delayed the beta of PoE2. I remember the first time they delayed the, the PoE2. I think I was still 19. I'm just joking, of course, but my point is PoE1 is going to be here for the foreseeable future, at least. And perhaps we now have a reason why people might put in an extra little bit of effort in each league. Why people might consider, um, hey, maybe I don't want to throw away my currency, or maybe there is some reason for me to create money or generate wealth beyond just caring about uh, the fundamental needs of my character, right? A lot of what I do is, is scope through this lens, right? When people are belting, why do you make so much money, blah, blah, blah. Well, when I get back to standard, I buy things like this. Because, uh, you know, for, for me, it's just it's cool to have some collectibles. I like being able, being able to create value for the other, the portion of our player base that does like playing standard. Even though that doesn't necessarily include me myself, I think that there's like a somewhat of a duty on my part as the caretaker of some of the best items to ever exist. That if, if, if the only inconvenience to myself is logging over for 15 seconds and somebody can have access to something, um, A, that escapes TFT's um sort of <laughs> oligarchic and or monopolistic control of these items and standard that's a good thing competition is always good and, and b you know maybe maybe that item will radically improve that player's week maybe they're from one of those places experiencing hyperinflation or they only get to play a couple hours a day and their friends all play there whatever it is I, you know people's lives are theirs to live but um <sighs> I think that this is a great, great overall change uh, and one that is going to potentially shake things up um, in a very, very, very beneficial way for so many players, including myself. I could not be happier about this change personally. Um, I I think that, uh, you know, there's going to be definitely some of these that I'm going to be destroying, adding to MTXs, and I'm going to be wearing with pride over in the league. Um, why, there's another point to this too, which is that for GGG, this is a very smart decision. Because when you confront these numbers, right, no business wants to lose 80% of their business every, you know, every couple of months or whatever, right? Obviously, it's in, it's in their best interest for people to play longer, for this curve to become more flat, right? If you can extend people's playing time because they want to have some consideration uh, for the currency that they leave the league with so that they can purchase um, different alt arts or race rewards uh, in standard, that's very good for them. Not to mention, because some of these, you know, like Thousand Ribbons or like some of the ones we've shown, they have these unique artworks, right? Well, maybe you don't have anything that matches that. Well, guess what you might you might be encouraged to do? You might be encouraged to go to the microtransaction store and buy some items that can match your alt art because everyone wants to flex. I don't care what anyone says. Everyone wants the rare item. Everyone wants the cool item, right? But nobody wants to look like their character doesn't match, right? So maybe you have one of these alt arts. Maybe you can only afford one of the cheaper ones, but you take so much pride in that. Maybe you go look on the MTX store and you start buying other MTXs to match it for the time being so that you can keep wearing that without looking silly. Uh, in every way that this benefits GGG. Um, and not only that, it benefits individual players. It benefits me in the sense that um, I feel validated in a lot of the efforts that I've made over the years in standard collecting some of these things. I know it validates all of the people who have been collecting altars for years on standard because GGG always promised that they would be able to be turned into MTXs, which they finally followed through on. And, uh, congratulations to them and thank you for doing so. Uh, but also here's another reason for people to play the leagues longer and for people to not treat standard as if it's a throwaway, meaningless league. Um, for for the content that I make, right, which is focusing generally on crafting and, and value creation in an economic sense for your character, right? Guess what? A lot of the stuff that I cover, right, especially when I talk about uh, at the end of the league, arbitrage opportunities or how you can, what I refer to as the standard price point equilibrium, something I've actually documented. If you go look up PO Economics written by Belton, uh, this is kind of a funny thing, actually, PO Economics. All right, PO Economics, Belton's Market Manifesto. This was written seven years ago. And what is the first thing on it? The standard price point equilibrium. 
right? Well, despite the average player's apathy towards standard as a league, it is, uh, is incredibly ignorant and misguided to deny its influence over league pricing on certain items. As leagues progress, inflation combined with a sense of impermanence will force items towards their standard equivalent price as there will be some players who will purchase them in order to profit in standard afterwards. This has remained true through the existence of Path of Exile is true today as it was when I wrote it. And so, um, you know, a lot of the contents I cover in that one is, is are the things that elicit responses from people like nobody gives a crap about standard. Well, guess what? Time to wake up, guys. There's a new reason to care about standard. The people who play on standard, I, I hope for your guys' sake, uh, even though I, I wouldn't consider myself to be one of you, hopefully this does uh, this, this does something to, to validate the efforts that you guys have put in over the time you've played because I know a lot of you are very passionate players um, you know, who either don't have the time or who just have different interests. And while those interests have often been, um, you know, uh, relegated to a second tier um, role, role, maybe now that, that won't be the case anymore. Because uh, some of the best and passionate, most passionate and uh, interested players I know on standard are collectors of things like alt arts or foil items. Um, and they certainly are not bad players. And there are certainly people whose time does not, uh, time and efforts do, do not deserve to be uh, dismissed as uh, meaningless or irrelevant. So I think this is a great change overall. I think it's one that can improve GGG's bottom line. I think it's one that can improve the longevity of players within temp leagues. I think it's one that validates the existence of people on standard. I think it's one who validates the existence of cross league players like myself who collect them. I think it's one of the ways that a lot of people, again, who play POE1, that might be remiss to get rid of POE1, right? Oh, I played this for 10 years. I don't really want to start over again. You know what I mean? Um, as, it, as it says in that article, GGG has had MTXs will carry from POE1 to POE2. And so... I know for myself personally, I would be far, far more excited about POE2 knowing, hey, I can bring over all these MTXs. And maybe five years from now, I see some guy being like, whoa, is that a, is that a demigod's amulet from POE1? And it's like, yeah, man, you know, I spent thousands of hours working forwards this 15 years ago. Oh, that's cool, dude. Whatever it is. Now, uh, maybe that doesn't matter to you, but I know it matters to me. And I know it matters to a lot of people. I think that this is just another thing adding to the the core competency of the game, um, allowing another multi-layered way for people to enjoy it. And that's always, at the end of the day, what it matters. It is a game. It should be fun. This is a really fun, exciting change for me, and I hope it's fun and exciting for you. Um, before I sign off here, one thing I do want to mention, and this is one of the things that uh, is perhaps uh, – We'll have to see how it gets implemented. But if we take a look at the reading, the way that this is worded here, alternate art unique items can be converted into account bound microtransactions. Okay. So alternate arts would only refer to, okay. So these are like blood dance here, alternate art. This demigods is an alternate art. Um, okay. But this demigods, all right, this demigods, this is actually just a skin for it. Cause I got drunk that night and corrupted it, but imagine it wasn't one of those, right? If that, that demigods would not be an alternate art, but this demigods is an alternate art. So is it only the alternate arts that are going to be convertible? Or if you look at then, if you then go look at the actual command itself, it's slash convert race rewards. Now those are two different things because not every race reward is an alternate art, right? Uh, like demigods are not alternate arts, the initial set of them, but they are some of the coolest micro transactions and they are race rewards. So I don't really know how they're going to implement that. Um, so that's something that's to be seen and maybe, maybe something to ask GGG uh, the next time there's an opportunity to. Um, what, uh, what also on top of that, one of the things that, um, is an important point to note is that demigods, uh, one of the reasons why they have so much value to them is because they have the character size, right? So if you take a look at my character here, the reason why it's so big is because that's a unique, uh, effect granted by demigods, increased character size. However, these are explicit modifiers on the demigods. They are not attached to the skin themselves. They are attached to the, uh, explicit right now that's not the case with the demigod's chest demigod's chest as you can see i actually have it as a skin transfer here you see it has demigod's dominant skin um but Gruth grothkulls allows for character size right so i have the grothkulls on and then i have it skinned with the altar demigods and the altar demigods as a part of its skin gives that glow as you can see the glow removes right and so if we take a look at the character size on demigods this is all on explicit modifiers right? It's not actually a part of the item itself. Even though these items without the character size, some of them look incredibly cool. Like the demigod swords, I think are amazing looking, right? And they still give those, uh, the wreath, right? The demigod swords, that little wreath of feathers that's on the bottom of the character that's coming from the swords. So that would always be there, but the character size doesn't. Now, I think that that's something that's important to clarify with GGG, because as I, as I pointed out a little bit earlier, right? Um, 
demigods are incredibly expensive and it would be uh, i think a tragedy for somebody to take something like a demigod's presence thinking that they're going to get character size destroying it only to find out that all it all it apl applies is a skin transfer with no unique art associated with with it so hopefully that's something that gets uh, clarified and i think it would actually be um you know i don't know if this would require any extra effort on their part uh i hope ggg does allow for the character size to um, become a kind of core part of those uh, because demigods are, I think, some of the most iconic items in Path of Exile and have been forever, allowing for them uh, and allowing for people to have that character size in Temp Leagues would be so, so, so cool. And I know that all, especially the racer guys back in the day who probably have a ton of these, um, I'm sure that that would be like just, just amazing for them. And uh, even though I've, I've won, as I showed you, I've won a demigods before, but just the one, these other ones here are ones that I've all bought. But, oh man, would that be a really, would that be a cool or what? Just like going into Temp League on the first couple of days. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's in town together and you walk by and you're twice the size of them. Oh, that'd be sweet, man. And another, sorry, another important thing too, aside from the fact that this gives people a way to play in standard, um, it could help the standard economy somewhat too, because, um, you know, it, it's a way to flush currency out, right? Um, when people have extra, like, I actually think it could potentially combat RMT too, because when people have, large amounts of currency in standard i think and they don't care about standard a lot of people just let that either sit there or rot or in some cases i'm sure they probably rmt it away however if you can now use that currency to buy these alt arts which then get destroyed right you now have a currency sink that could be very beneficial i think for um you know some of the inflation that occurs in standard but as well could potentially combat the rmt on the supply side from people who just uh just use that as a way to kind of um you know make their efforts in leagues or, or whatever it is uh have some value so uh let me know what you guys think um the uh the conversation by the way with that gentleman there uh, how did that end off uh i forgot to count, summarize it up uh so i just said that to him there made my points and um, as most people on the internet who, uh, you know, speak from a, a place of little concern and cowardice do, uh, rather than addressing any of the points after insulting me, you take this stuff too seriously, go touch some grass. So that, that's how you know you've won an argument. And uh, I think that uh, even though some of you are probably just saying this as a way to, you know, when you make mean comments like that or try to invalidate the excite excitations of other people, um, I, I don't know what it is. It usually reflects more on you than it does on me or anyone else you say it to, I think, but Maybe maybe do put some consideration in that because I don't think anyone f likes to feel like the things they care about are meaningless. Um, I, I know I certainly don't. I'm sure lots of other people do. Uh, on top of that, another funny comment I experienced, which maybe as a fun way to exit the video here, you guys will enjoy. I got this on one of my shorts. My shorts have reached a lot of people. That's great. Welcome to anyone who's new to the channel. This one made me laugh. Um, I posted a short where uh, they announced the next league is going to be a crafting league. And as you can see, this gentleman here said, you're not going to get any mirror items. Stop it with the bullshit. Just a mid-tier shit item. Uh, to which I, of course, laughed and I said, first time in the channel, huh? So <laughs> maybe he'll explore and uh, perhaps a, uh, a little smile will come across his face too. Because uh, <laughs> it certainly did on mine. Um, the, uh, the new league coming out, 3.24. Lots of big changes happening. Uh, hopefully I can cover those soon. Uh, this is the one that stuck out to me the most. And as you can see, I know this is a 45 minute video, but I do think it is a very big deal. Maybe something you haven't considered before. Congratulations to my collectors, my fellow collectors who have been validated in their efforts. Congratulations to my standard friends who perhaps will not be as uh, put down anymore. And uh, hopefully for the rest of you, this was something that uh, maybe sparked a new idea for something you can care about, create some long-term value in the game. We can all have some more fun. All right, cheers guys. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, you know, as you guys know, I don't take sponsors on my videos. I have recently updated my Patreon. Um, there's been a great reception to that. A ton of people have signed up. I'm super grateful. Uh, if you guys are interested in following along uh, with what I'm doing in Next League, getting a closer look at uh, some of my stuff, I've created a new reward system for Patreons and supporters of the channel. You can check my previous video for more details on that. I will link the Patreon below as well. And uh, Maybe take a look on that if you want uh, some additional perks for the stuff. God bless, guys. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.